Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, professor of obstetrics and, and the gynecology faculty of Princeton Mansoura University. Today I want to speak about anatomy of the breast. It is very important to know the anatomy of the breast. What are the objectives today? What is the definition of the breast? Regions of the breast? Structure of the breast? The vascular supply, lymphatic drainage, nervous supply of the breast? And lastly, the function and the cosmetic aspect of the breast. Let us start with the definition. What is the breast? Breast is a pair of mammary glands extending from the front of the chest in people and adult human females. At early life, they start from the second to sixth rib. Later on in women's life, may extend down due to sagging or orthotic breast. So. In early life, it is from second to sex. Okay? And the breast is located on the anterior thoracic wall. As you see here, this is the thoracic wall, and this is the breast is anterior to the thoracic wall. Superficial to the pectoralis major muscle. This is a pectoralis major muscle. The breast is superficial to the pectoralis major, and the serratus anterior muscle. Okay? What is the, the, the function of the breast is to produce, store, and secrete milk after pregnancy, of course. Okay? So, this is as regard the breast, the pair of mammary gland extending from the front of the chest in pubescent and adult human females. What are the regions? of the breasts. Look to this picture, please. There is circular body. This is the most prominent part of the breast or largest portion. This is called circular body. And this is the axillary tail or tail of spence. This is called axillary tail or tail of spence. So we have circular body and axillary tail or tail of spence. Okay. We have also nibble at the middle, at the center, at the mid clavicular line, corresponding to the fourth rep in early life of woman. Okay. And surrounding the nipple is the areola, slightly pigmented skin around the nipple. It's called areola. Areola in Latin or Greek it's called the small area. So it's called areola means the small area surrounding the nipple. Slightly pigmented okay and it becomes deeply pigmented and large in size during pregnancy forming primary areola, secondary areola, and so on. Okay? So, we have circular body, axillary tail, or tail of spans, nibble, and areola. Okay. Circular body is the largest portion at the most prominent part of the breast. Axillary tail is the smaller part. Runs along the inferior lateral edge of the pectoralis major, towards the axillary fossa. So, run along the inferior lateral edge of the pectoralis major towards the axillary fossa. Nibble at the center of the breast, composed mostly of a smooth muscle fiber. What about areola surrounding the nibble? Okay, it's the pigmented skin. And there are numerous species glands within the areola. This species gland enlarged during the pregnancy and has a function, secreting an oily substance that acts as a protective lubricant for the nipple. Okay? So, this species gland in the areola, secreting oily substance, act as a protective lubricant for the nipple during pregnancy to give help 
during breastfeeding. Okay. What about structures of the breast? Please look to this picture. We have mammary glands and ducts. Okay. Mammary glands are modified sweet glands. And it consists of series of ducts and the secretory lobules. So, we consider the component of mammary glands. Secretory lobules from 15 to 20, in this average, the number of lobules from 15 to 20. And series of ducts. Okay? Each lobule consists of many alveoli drained by a single lactiferous duct. Then these ducts converge, as you see here in the picture. These ducts converge at the nipple like spokes of a wheel. These ducts converge here at the nipple like spokes of a wheel. So, what is the component of mammary glands? Formed of multiple secretory lobules, 15 to 20 in number, and series of ducts. Each lobule consists of alveoli, as you see, drained by a single lactiferous duct. Okay, these ducts, as you see here, converge at the nipple like spokes of a wheel. This is as regard the mammary gland. What else in the structures of the breast? Connective tissue stroma. Connective tissue stroma is a supporting structure which is around the mammary gland. And it has a fibrous and the fatty component. Okay? The fibrous stroma condenses to form suspensory ligament of Cooper. These ligaments have two main functions. Attach the breast to the dermis and the underlying pectoral fascia. And the second function is to separate the secretory lipule of the breast. Please look again to the picture. So we have a connective tissue in between the lipule here, formed of fat, okay, separating the mammary glands, okay, and in certain parts, it is condensed to form fibrous tissue, forming what's called suspensory ligament of Cooper. This suspensory ligament of Cooper, or condensed fibrous tissue, attaches the breast to the dermis, anteriorly and posteriorly to the pectoral fascia. Okay? And this ligament is called suspensory ligament of Cooper. What about pectoral fascia? Pectoral fascia is a flat sheet of connective tissue associated with pectoralis major muscle. And it acts as an attachment point for the suspensory ligament, as I mentioned before. So, the base of the breast lies on the pectoral fascia, and the pectoral fascia cover the pectoral major muscle. And this pectoral fascia give attachment also to the suspensory ligament. As I said before, suspensory ligament of Cooper, this Cooper ligament attach it posterior to the pectoral fascia and the anterior to the dermis of the skin, okay? What about the retromammary space? This is a layer of loose connective tissue between the breast and the pectoral fascia, which is known as retromammary space. And this is a potential space. And this space is often used in reconstructive plastic surgery. This is called retromammary space. So, what is the structure of the breast again? Again, we have the mammary glands, okay, 
connective tissue in between the mammary glands in some area fat tissue and in some area condensed to form fibrous tissue which is a cooper ligament attached posteriorly to the pectoral fascia in the pectoral muscle and the anterior to the dermis this is a cooper ligament okay what else pectoral fascia here this pectoral fascia cover the pectoralis major muscle this is a pectoralis major muscle and this is the reps and this is the pectoral muscle and covering the pectoral muscle is the pectoral fascia between the pectoral fascia and the breast there is retro mammary space here and this is the potential space is important in some plastic breast surgery constructive surgery okay this is as regard the structure of the breast and we said mammary glands is formed of many secretory alveoli 15 to 20 in number and the ducts series of ducts and these ducts open converge sorry converge like spoke of wheel towards the nipple as you see here this is as regard the structure of the breast okay what about the arterial supply you can divide the breast into medial part and the lateral part please remember that the medial part is mainly supplied by internal thoracic artery or its other name is called internal mammary artery okay either of them internal thoracic or it's called also internal mammary artery this is for the medial part what about the lateral part Lateral part receive blood from four vessels. Please remember the axillary artery, which gives two branches, lateral thoracic and the thoracoacromial branches. And there is other two vessels. Lateral mammary branch originates from posterior intercostal arteries, which is derived from the aorta, and the mammary branch originates from anterior intercostal artery. This is the blood supply to the breast, arterial supply. What about the venous drainage? We know that the veins of the breast correspond to the arteries drainage into axillary and the internal thoracic veins. So axillary vein and the internal thoracic vein. What about lymphatic drainage? It is very important because lymphatic drainage has an important role in case of breast cancer. Okay, so there are three groups of lymph nodes that receive lymph from breast tissue. What are these? Axillary nodes, as you see in this picture. This is the axillary nodes. This is the, the most important one. More than 75% of lymphatic drainage for the axillary lymph nodes. Okay? Then, parasternal nodes or internal mammary lymph nodes. This one. So, Internal mammary lymph nodes constitute about 20%, but axillary lymph nodes constitute about 75% or more, up to 90% maybe. This is as regard the axillary lymph nodes, that's why it's very important in cases like breast cancer. And posterior intercostal nodes constitute about 5%. Okay, this is as regard the lymphatic drainage of the breast. What about scan of the breast? Scan of the breast also receive lymphatic drainage. Scan drain to the axillary and the inferior deep cervical and the infraclavicular nodes. What about nibble and areola? Nibble and areola drain to subareural lymphatic plexus. So, nipple and areola drain into subareolar lymphatic plexus, but the whole skin of the breast drain to the axillary, inferior deep cervical, and the infraclavicular lymph nodes. By the way, axillary lymph nodes also here can be divided into apical, central, anterior, posterior, and the lateral. And there is another classification, surgical classification, level one two, three, according to relation to the pectoralis 
minor muscle borders and so on okay they divide it into level one two and three another classification is apical central anterior posterior and the left this is as regard for the axillary lymph nodes okay what else what is the nerve supply to the breast the breast is innervated by anterior and the lateral cutaneous branch of the fourth to sex intercostal nerves. These nerves contain both sensory and the autonomic nerve fibers. What is the function of these autonomic nerve fibers? It regulates smooth muscles and the blood vessel too. But please remember, contraction of the nipple controlled by oxytocin and prolactin secreted from the pituitary gland. Okay? You should know that breast carry clinical significance. Why? Because some clinical disorder happen in breasts, like what? Like nostalgia, like mastitis, breast abscess, fat, fat necrosis, Okay, fibroadenosis, which is a common disorder of the breast. Also, the most important disorder related to breast is the breast cancer. That's why we should know the anatomy of the breast, blood supply, lymphatic drainage, everything about the breast. Okay, and we should differentiate benign lesions of the breast from malignant lesion and usually the benign lesions of the breast occur in the upper outer quadrant of the breast okay what about the function and the cosmetic aspects of the breast the primary biologic function of the breast is to produce milk storing milk also and secreting milk for breastfeeding also, the breast has four many centers, been symbol of femininity and beauty. So, is there any standard ideal breast? The appearance of the normal female breast differ greatly from one woman to another woman. And the breast of any given woman, woman even differ at different times during woman life. So there is a change happen in the breast, starting from puberty up to after menopause, depending on the hormones, estrogen and the progesterone hormone mainly, and the prolactin during pregnancy. So there is a changes during and after me the adolescence, during the pregnancy, during the menstrual cycle itself. And after menopause and we know that this changes for example during menstrual cycle the woman feel breast engorgement and tenderness and nostalgia premenstrual under the effect of progesterone hormone after ovulation and this relief later on with the with the menstrual flow and so on so the woman may have changes even during the one menstrual cycle okay also during different times in her life during childbearing age is different than after menopause while the glandular tissue after menopause becomes atrophied and replaced by fatty and the fibrous tissue okay and that's why mammography has a diagnostic accuracy better after menopause because decrease in the size of the glandular tissue and the increase in the fatty tissue and the fibrous tissue gives the mammogram more accuracy in diagnosis of any breast cancer okay so there's a changes in the breast during human life starting from the party going through the reproductive age then after menopause Okay, 
this is the end of my lecture. I hope it was clear enough. Thank you, everybody. This is my box published on Amazon. Textbook of obstetric, textbook of gynecology, contraception handbook, multiple choice question book, and the medical disorder in pregnancy book. And I want you to know the newcomer, which is gynecologic oncology, published one day ago on Amazon. You can find it. Go to Amazon through my link here, and I put it in, in one comment. Okay. And also visit my YouTube channel in this link. I'll put it also in another comment. And this is the third side belong to me on Blogspot. And I hope all of them will be beneficial for you. Look for the new book, Gynecologic Oncology book, published on Amazon yesterday. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Wishing you the best.